as if the internet is not talking about AI enough. Hey everyone, Stefan here. I hope you're doing well. In previous videos, I have shown you how I use the plugins from Retouch for Me to shave off a good amount of retouching time thanks to AI. And they've made some important updates to their products and I thought I'll quickly show them to you. So if you already own these, then make sure that you log in and you get the updates, so download the updates. As you can see, when you go to your download page, that you have an updated date, an updated date here, 1.2 for heal, dodge and burn, for many others as well. So what is the main difference? Well, first of all, the AI got smarter, as you would hope and expect, but the interface was redesigned as well. So here in Photoshop, I wanna show you the heal plugin first. So if you go into your filters, retouch for me, heal, you will see that the interface has changed quite a bit you have this slider down here. And what you probably didn't notice is how quickly it analyzed the image. But here is the magic in this new interface. You see this slider here. As you dial it back, you see what the plugin has actually retouched. So you can dial in just the amount that you want. As you can tell in this photo, this is one of the most difficult situations that you can have as a retoucher if you have a subject with those beautiful freckles. But in between, you also have some acne and imperfect skin. So finding those is quite the dealio. As you can see, you are now deciding which parts you want to retouch. So here on the chin, but I definitely don't want to ruin those beautiful freckles. The plugin is aware of those freckles and leaves them alone. So here we go. Now I've heard from my students that they don't like that the preview button is all the way up here. So you're moving this, this slider here and then to see the original image, they have to go all the way up here and all the way down. There's a much, much easier way. Just hit the space bar and you see the before and the after, before and after. So this new interface is really helping to decide what you want to use and it is so much faster. All those tools, they're constantly evolving and um, the better they are and the faster we work and the better the results are, the happier our clients are. Let's go to a different picture. So for this, I need to get this layer palette in so that you see what we're doing. So this is the original photo, nothing being done to it. If you really want to use this update properly, you would have to work on a separate layer and I'll show you why. So I just duplicated this layer. I'm now going into the filter again, retouch for me, heal. Have you noticed now how quickly it rendered this? So we dial this in just to see what we're getting. Yet again, hold the space bar, pretty close to perfect. There's certain areas like here where it's even for the AI, extremely difficult to discern what is actually skin imperfection and what is freckles. That, my friends, will always be up to the human eye and you have to decide and yes, a few things you have to do manually. But if it takes the majority of work off our hands, perfect, a huge time saver. Now, here's what I was talking about before. Here it says, make mask. Once you click this, it will now apply this to this layer. So you only see the actual healing that has been happening. You can now put a layer mask onto this and decide if something went a little bit overboard, if you want to remove some, and you can dial in how much of that retouching you want to apply. That is the heal part. The other update that we have to look into is dodge and burn. Now, if you expect a red overlay, just like we have in the heal plugin, then no, it's not here. I wish there would be, that would be kind of cool. 
But nevertheless, so you just look at the photo and you dial in how much of that dodge and burn you want to apply. Have a look at those darker areas under the eyes. You can see how it evens out the skin tones and the lighting. Now, I usually tend to go overboard. I go all the way up. Well, not nearly, but about 150% or something like that. And then I will use soft light layer. And you will see we are in trouble in a second. We didn't duplicate the layer. Same story as before. Duplicate the layer. Then you use soft light so you can blend it in. So let's go back. We duplicate the layer. And now we're going into our filter. Dodge and burn. Analyzing. Blend it in. Go a little bit too far. A little bit more than you might need. Because you can easily dial it back and click apply. So now we have this as a soft light layer. So this now needs to be switched to soft light. And here we go. And now you have the advantage of being able to mix this in just like you want it. So maybe at 70%, maybe 60%, something like that. This dodge and burn is really a corrective dodge and burn like we've done with curves in the olden days it's not really contouring you would then use something like portrait volumes to add the dimension back in the other update that i wanted to show you and i show you on this photo of my gorgeous daughter my young baby ballerina is the updated version of the clean backdrop so let's have a look at this image Looks pretty nice that's in the studio, but of course it needs retouching and needs perfecting. Starts with the floor. Oh my lordy, that floor doesn't look so swish. Long story short, I have to deal with this. So what do we do? We go into filter, we go to retouch for me, clean backdrop. In this case, it takes a little bit longer to analyze because it really needs to do two things. It needs to check what is the substance, the ground or the back or the back wall or whatever it is. What is the dirt and what is our subject? Because one of the things that you want to tick is here in the very bottom left. It says auto mask because you don't want any moles or any any parts of the clothing to be affected. Now let's have a look. Let's zoom in. This is what we started with after before after now you can dial this in if you like if you want less if you want more you see how it fits now depending on how close you are how further away you are what kind of dirt it is you can play around with big coarse small medium or fine i just leave it on fine for now i think that works brilliantly you hit apply and the dirt is gone and in case you wonder what we've then done to that photo, I've blurred the floor a little bit more, added a little bit of a grading here in front to really accentuate that spotlight that came in. Then I might retouch the dancer just a little bit. That's before, that's after. And then I'm adding a film look to it. That's a film stock that I use very often when I shoot film. This was shot digitally, so I'm adding that in. And then a little bit of a color grade, maybe. So let's look at one more example. Again, that's Yves Noel. And let's have a look at that floor. Ah, yeah. And you see all that little stuff here. All of that would need to be retouched. So please plug in. Save me some time. Retouch for me clean backdrop do your magic it's thinking it's thinking before after before after now it left some structure alone and that's actually quite important because you don't want it to be completely blurred otherwise it looks like that person is just floating in midair so structure is good dirt is not so here we go before after have a look over here right there there see and these dotty dots gone if you create 
a mask, this will then turn this into a layer where you only see what has been retouched. It will take you forever to do it by yourself. And just to finish it, in case you wonder what we've done, so this is cleaned and color corrected. And then again, I put on my little grade and that's the final image. When we talk about retouching, I think a lot of people get it wrong. They think that we are faking things or that we do things to our subject when a lot of our time has actually nothing to do with the subject. If you just look at Yves Noel here, before and after, there's hardly any change. It's a little bit of a contrast change, but other than that, all the work has gone into the background. So to keep this all short, if you don't use the Retouch For Me plugins and you are doing portrait retouching, have a look at those plugins and decide for yourself if that would help you. All right, that's it from me. As always, go out and create something awesome.